In this video, I'm going to demonstrate with an example the actual calculations associated with the standard deviation I estimated for the sleep data. So you might recall in the textbook I provided a table with all of the calculations and I walked through them step by step and I ended up with a standard deviation of 1.21 for sleeping. The mean is a 7.36 based on this sample size of 11 and the standard deviation is 1.21. So how can I get those values if I had to recalculate them myself? Well, I can use the trusted standard deviation formula, which has those six steps that I described in a previous video. And how I could do that without increasing highly the chances of making an error, which is how you would do it if you actually did it in, on a paper and a pencil with a calculator. You can definitely make mistakes that way, in my experience. I would do it in Excel, that's one way, and then I'll show you quickly how to do it in SPSS as well. In Excel, the benefit of doing it is that, well, it's readily accessible for a lot of people, but also for a lot of lab reports or assignments that students have to do, you have to actually show the calculations associated with the analysis. So Excel will actually produce those calculations for you. So the first step in calculating the standard deviation the long way by hand with Excel is to calculate the mean. And that can be calculated in Excel very simply. First, I'll point out that, whoops, I've got, should write case there. So we've got case 1 to 11, and we have sleeping values. In each case has a sleeping value. You know, some people reported 7, 9, 5, 7, 6. So first of all, we need to calculate the mean. And we can get the mean by using the average function. But right, B2 to B12. And we get the average of 7.36. So that's the first step done. Calculate the mean. Excel does that with the average. Calculate the deviations from the mean. Well, I'm only going to do it to two decimal places here. So here are going to be my deviations. I need to calculate each deviation, so B2 minus 7.363. And I get the deviation there. I did it to three decimal places. And I can just drag this to the bottom to get the same value. Now, you can see that it's always being subtracted by the 7.363. Now, these deviations need to be squared. That's the third step. And to get the squared values, you can go C, 2, and then you put this hat symbol and 2, and that gives me the squared value. So then we can just drag those calculations down, and now we have all the squared values, square the deviations, done, sum the squared deviations. Well, let's do that with the equal sum D2 to D 12. Now I got 14.54. Sum the square deviations. Done. Divide the sum of squares by n minus 1. So let's actually, how many cases do we even have here? Well, let's count them. We already know it's 11 based on the case numbers in the other column, but let's just actually use the count function b2 and then colon b12. That gives me 11. So I know that I need to minus 1 from that. So I need to divide the sums of squares by n minus 1, which is this value here. So I'm going to get that by equaling d13 divided by 11, put that in parentheses, 11 minus 1 gives me 1 1.4546. And now I need the square root of that value to get the standard deviation. So square root d14, whoops, 15 rather. And that should give me the standard deviation I obtained in the previous slide. Standard deviation of 1.21. And the standard deviation rounded is equal to 1.21. So. These are the steps involved with doing the calculations the long way in such a way that you get all the values, the mean, the sample size, the deviations, the squared deviations, and then the sum of squares right here, 14.54. And then we divide that by n minus 1. And then we square root that value and we get the standard deviation. 
Now a much quicker way to do it is in SPSS. We can grab the data from here, put it in SPSS, and then we can call that sleep. And analyze frequencies, put the sleep variable in there, statistics, standard deviation right here, continue. We don't want the display frequencies, click OK. And SPSS gives us the 1.206 or rounded 1.21. So those are the steps demonstrated for you in calculating the standard deviation with Excel the long way if you need to show your work or SPSS the quick way.